It was like drinking the feeling of being peaceful. Being peaceful in your mind. Well, not if you have too much, then it's something else. Hi, I'm Ben. Welcome to my book corner. Today we're taking a look at Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Came out in February of 2022. It's around 300 pages long and was suggested to me as a book about an orcish adventurer who's retired and opened a coffee shop. And also it's got amazing cover art. As always, we shall take a look at the story, the characters, and the world building before giving my final thoughts at the end. So, pull up a chair, grab a coffee, and let's have a talk about it. So as mentioned in the intro, this was pitched to me as Dungeons & Dragons Barbarian basically starts a coffee shop after finishing adventuring. That is pretty much what you get with this. This is the exploits of Viv, who has been adventuring for many years and has saved up a huge amount, well not a huge amount of money, but a large amount of money to set up a coffee shop in the city of Thune. Coffee is a rare drink in this area of the world and it's something that she tried whilst out on her adventures and she loved it so much she decided to make it a business of her own. And this follows the story of her trying to set up a coffee shop in an abandoned sort of livery. She's got a magic stone that she believes will help make it a success and she sort of stumbles along with no real idea of how to do any of this. She's got a vague idea how the machine works when she eventually buys it but she doesn't know where to buy things from she doesn't really know the city that well she has no idea on how to market stuff and get customers and all that sort of stuff and this is very much in many ways feels a bit like a found family story more about the people that sort of get drawn into the whole idea of making this coffee shop and how they all contribute and to me the coffee shop itself is the star of the show in this you also in viv's case have a little bit of character development which we'll touch out a bit later on in terms of a story around how she's trying to leave her past behind and start afresh somewhere else from complete scratch. It's a really, really sweet story. It's quite homely in many regards as well, and it's actually pretty solid stuff, to be honest. So while the story is pretty strong, I do have some issues with the characterization in this. You follow Viv and Viv doesn't come across as especially competent and that makes sense judging by what she was doing in her previous life, but she has hardly any people skills whatsoever and she hasn't got any clue of what's going on. She gets aided by a number of different characters, the main ones being Tandri, a succubus, who ends up being sort of the romance for her throughout the book which is a very slow burn to put it mildly. Cal who helps actually physically build the cafe and get the various materials so on and so forth and a little ratkin called Thimble who has the idea of baking and ends up being the baker for the place. None of them have a great deal of actual character depth to them. Thimble just loves baking. He's described as a genius in the book, and that's clear that in this regard he is. But he doesn't get much beyond, he likes coffee, he likes bacon. And that's sort of indicative of a lot of the characters in here. The two that kind of get the most are Viv, as the story's from her point of view, and she has a clear character arc of starting a new life, trying to leave that life behind. And when that old life comes knocking on the door, trying to resist going back in some of the things that she used to do turning her back on the sword in many regards you can't just stab your way out of all the problems and you have Tandri who really does fizzle out for me in this story her introduction is really good and the way she initially comes across is absolutely really interesting and her biggest thing is the fact that she's sort of fighting the preconceptions of the fact that she is a succubus and what that means to people but there's not a huge amount here. They're all likeable characters enough. The ones that you meet in here that are not meant to be likeable are very not likeable. But there's no real depth here, and part of that is due to the length of the book, if I'm completely honest. The thing that does seem to have a lot of personality is the coffee shop itself and the city. So that is going to lead us on 
the next section. While I found the character work disappointing, the world building fares so much better. And it does touch very, very mildly on things like brief racism, or at least preconceptions of race within the world. Nobody would expect an orc to be opening any sort of coffee shop or eatery in this city. And you have these notions of what people are meant to be like that sort of bleed through. The city is really reasonably well fleshed out. You have various different places that they have to go throughout the story to get their different supplies and how these people interact with each other is made perfectly clear. You don't get any true sense of monetary value for anything like this and Viv has no idea how much money is worth anyway. So that makes complete sense. But what I really do like is the way the sort of criminal underworld kind of links into the adventuring past. There are some links here that Viv didn't realise were there to her past with like the people who basically have like a protection racket within the story. And also there is a character on the side of that called the Madrigal who is quite interesting as well in many regards and the way that they sort of pull the strings on the city is pretty well done. And it does make the city feel like a living, breathing, thriving, lived-in city. So that side of it is really good. So on to final thoughts. And the first thing I need to address is the way that I read this book. So myself and Noah from In Between the Lines initially did this as a co-read on stream. And we did it over the course of a few different weeks before we got to about the halfway mark. And I think because we'd read 15, 18% at a time and then it'd be a week again, that actually quite badly damaged the pacing of the story, I think, because it hit a point where I was struggling to grapple with it. I wasn't finding anything to keep me interested. And I think the gap didn't help that and may have coloured my opinion of this. That being said, once I started reading it like a proper book, it was fine. It was appeared to be pretty well paced and I covered it all. I think it was just in a night I managed the rest of it. So overall, this is a C tier book for me. I still have the issue around the characters. I still think they were quite shallow, but the world building was solid. The romance, whilst incredibly slow, did feel quite organic in the way it was portrayed and the way that Tandri and Viv grew closer to each other. And I like the themes of sometimes you need to leave your past behind and start again from scratch. And the found family idea is a good one as well. And I'm still going to read the follow-up when it comes out later this year because I have a feeling that might flesh out Viv even more and actually might be a better read for me personally. Plus, it's about a bookshop. You know what what can go wrong right well that's my thoughts i'd love to know yours have you read this what did you think of it let me know in the comments below and i'll catch you all next time